I just love our hometown, East London. At the beach here today, and man, it's uh, just beautiful. It's gorgeous. Nahoon Beach. Oh, I wanna feel something. I just wanna breathe again. Let me get back in my body. Oh. It's uh, a privilege to be sharing with you from, from this beautiful area. So thanks for joining me. Really excited about sharing with you today. So life happens to all of us. We all take hard knocks at times. And if we're not able to overcome deep disappointment, we can't live God-glorifying lives. There are so many believers who are disillusioned with God because of disappointments. So I wanna share with you today about our recent journey of facing deep disappointment as a church community, and hopefully give you a few pointers on how to overcome when life knocks you silly. Sometimes things don't go as planned, but then God has a better plan, a beautiful plan. We must simply receive the eyes of faith to see it. This message is a call to each of us to step into a mature faith, grounded and anchored in who Jesus is, even when life hits us hard. And man, has life hit our church community hard over the last few weeks. To give you some background to our deep disappointment, Kim Gono, a good friend of ours, was diagnosed with cancer three years ago. And she went through the whole medical process of surgery and chemotherapy. She seemed to be doing fine until about a year and a half ago when the cancer reappeared in her, in her shoulder area and it spread rapidly. Something like 20 small tumors appeared all over her shoulder area. I remember getting the bad news, which absolutely floored us. It was gut-wrenching to think what this is going to look like. She was 34 years old at that stage with two small girls, Ava and Ella, six and four years old respectively. So that Sunday morning, a few days after we got the news of the cancer's reappearance, I bumped into Kim just after she dropped the two girls off at Kids Church. I asked her, Kim, how are you doing? I could see that she was not doing well and she broke down weeping and so did I. I just held her for a moment and prayed for her, wanting to somehow help her. And, and that is when we started to fight the good fight of faith. Every opportunity we had over the last year and a half, we would pray for her, trusting Jesus for her healing. Not getting healed simply wasn't an option. It simply isn't part of the plan. Surely God will have a brilliant outcome planned for this. I fully believe that Jesus still heals. I've personally been present at three different occasions over the last five years where cancer disappeared off people's bodies during prayer in Jesus' name. And it was confirmed by physicians in the days following. In one case, the feedback was after five biopsies with no trace of cancer, the doctors cannot believe it. I've seen pancreatic cancer healed, stage four lymphoma cancer healed, and cancer of the eye instantly healed after prayer in Jesus' name. I believe in miraculous healing. And this confirms the reality of God. God is real, he still does miracles, and we were trusting for a miracle for Kim. I struggle to know how are we to manage this journey as a church community? A year and a half ago, the elders of our church went to pray for Kim at her home, but there was no improvement that evening. The next morning, I was battling. I felt so burdened. I felt like, oh, feeling like I have to somehow make the miracle happen. I knew if this doesn't work out well, if she does not get healed and we keep on praying for her, trusting for healing, 
I would be leading our church community into a whole lot of pain, a whole lot of heartache. But isn't that the call of God to us as believers, to walk into darkness, to bring light, to go where there is sickness, to bring healing, to go where there is pain and hurt, to mend broken hearts and relationships. That is what Jesus would do. And that is our call to go where it's uncomfortable because we know Jesus has already overcome all of this when He died at the cross on Resurrection Sunday, when Jesus rose from the dead, He won the ultimate victory over all evil, disease and death. That gives us great confidence. However, I cried out to God, Jesus, what am I to do? My answer came from Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in the book of Daniel and how they handled the trial of either bowing before the golden statue of Nebuchadnezzar or being cast into a flaming furnace bow or die, <laughs> came the charge. <laughs> Those were the only two options. It was such a scary scenario. Their response to the king became our response to this situation as well. Daniel 3 verse 16 to 18, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us from your hand O king but if not let it be known to you O king that we do not serve your gods nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up I love their response our God is able and he will O king he will deliver us we're extremely confident we know who our God is but even if he doesn't we will not bow to the gold image and that became our motto. Our God can heal and He will heal Kim. But even if He doesn't, we will not bow before unbelief. We will worship King Jesus because He's worthy of all our praise. And this is what I've said multiple times to our church and to God in prayer. God, you know that we will worship you no matter what. You are worthy of praise. Even if Kim dies, we will still worship you, Lord. But God, oh God, if you would show up and heal her, we will tell the world that there's a God in this city, Jesus Christ, the healer. God, come and heal her. We trust in you. We knew we were up against it. The mountain of cancer, the giant of sickness staring us down. But we decided we will not bow before unbelief because what if Jesus shows up? And we've said this so many times. We would rather die believing than live in unbelief. And I'm, I'm so proud of our guys of keeping the faith till the very end. Unfortunately, things did not go as we planned, but God has a better plan, a beautiful plan. It's been such an honor to walk this journey with JP and Kim. It's been really tough. I don't think we've ever prayed more for someone's healing as we did for Kim. It's been the fight of our lives, the fight for her life and future. It's also been a very emotional journey for many of us to see her become weaker and weaker, to see her suffer and yet keep on fighting, not wanting to give up, still hoping and trusting for healing right to the end. Even when she could no longer speak, she wrote on pieces of paper for those who came to worship and pray for her on that last day to turn the worship music louder. She wasn't giving up. She believes that Jesus is her healer. Kim has been such an inspiration, a woman of faith, a fighter, challenging all of us to increase our faith in Jesus. Kim Gono breathed her last breath here on earth on Easter Friday, Good Friday at five minutes past three in the afternoon, which is the same time that Jesus died on Easter Friday. Jesus breathed his last breath on the cross at around three o'clock in the afternoon. I believe that this is important for us, that Kim died at the same time and on the day we celebrate the death of Christ and the cross. You see, this is our cross that we are walking through. The doctors gave her a few days to live. And from early that Friday morning, people from our church were there to pray for her, to worship, to love her, to massage her feet. Some brought food. We had a doctor friend there who took care of her medically. It was amazing. It was incredible to see how the body of Christ came together. They worshiped that whole day until she passed away and after that when she stepped into glory. It was incredible to see the commitment, the faith of believers and the body of Christ in action. 
God's love was revealed. The peace and presence of God over the house and area was glorious. What a way to pass from this life into eternity, worshiping till the last few moments. Just incredible. Kim's death is our cross as a church community. It's our disappointment, our pain of losing a friend, spouse, mom, and loved one. Our disappointment of not having our prayers for healing answered in the way we believed it should have. We hoped, we believed for healing, trusted for a miracle, but what we were hoping for did not come to pass. Isn't that how it was for the disciples as well when Jesus died? They had hopes, dreams, ambitions, and then Jesus died. It didn't look like they thought it should look like when Jesus died on the cross. It didn't fit their picture of how God should do things. And there Jesus died a miserable, terrible, shameful death. Now the good news is that the story didn't end there. Resurrection Sunday was coming. It has been a huge disappointment for many of us when Kim died. And the tears have flowed over the last few weeks. People are asking questions, wondering why wasn't she healed? Why, how could she leave behind two young daughters and her husband Jean-Pierre? I know, it doesn't feel right. But when things don't go to plan, then God has a better plan, a beautiful plan. We simply need to see what God is doing right now. Over the last two months, we set aside five Tuesday evenings for our congregation to come together at church to pray for Kim, to trust Jesus to heal her. The medical route was no longer an option. It was only a miracle that could save her. On the final evening, as we could see no change, no improvement in her condition, I asked God, Lord, <laughs> who will you be to us in this? I heard the whisper of God in my heart, I will be your comforter. That was not what I wanted to hear. I had a different plan. Sometimes things don't go as planned, but God has a better plan. We were trusting for Jesus to be revealed as the healer. Instead, he chose to reveal himself as comforter. This is important. Now, don't miss this. Could this also be our journey to the resurrection life of Christ? You see, you can't have the resurrection without the cross. The path to resurrection life is through the cross. It's by facing death, facing disappointment and pain, and yet not allowing disillusionment and pain to overwhelm us or to cause us to turn away from God or to stop believing. We need a mature faith that isn't shaken when life hits us hard. Negative experiences changes nothing about who Jesus is. He is still the healer. But now at this moment, He is revealing Himself as comforter and as our courage for the journey forward. This story isn't finished. Our story isn't finished. Jean-Pierre, Ava and Ella's story isn't finished. For the disciples, they came through their valley of the shadow of death and of disappointment and discovered the resurrection life of Christ. And they, by God's power, changed the world. This reminds me of Jeremy Camp's story. He's a well-known gospel artist. And when he was in the, his early 20s, he married a lovely girl who became sick with cancer and ultimately died. And in that season, while she was in hospital dying, he wrote a song called, I Still Believe. It's such a powerful song, a powerful truth declaration. I still believe, despite the disappointment and the pain. God, I still believe your word. I still believe who you are despite my painful experience. And that song has impacted the world. That song that grew from that place, it came from the place of pain and disappointment, has impacted so many hearts and lives. The worst moments of life is when we are unable to see Him, to see who He is and what He's doing in the situation. Those are the darkest days of life when we can't see Jesus in the midst of our trials or sufferings, or worse, we accuse God's character, we blame Him, and we push Him away. God is our comforter and our courage right now. Open your eyes and see Him. Are you not seeing God's goodness? Look again. Not seeing God working? Well, look again. Open your eyes and look again. He's there. He's in your midst. He is for you. Some wonder about all the prayers, all the hours upon hours of seeking God's face for Kim's healing. Was it for nothing? 
No, it was all worth it. It is working together for a great reward. As Hebrews 11:6 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. There is a reward coming for those who diligently seek God. It's worth it. Let's not waver in our faith. We will experience the resurrection life of Christ, not only in the next life, but also in this life. Our reward as a church community is coming. I am so proud of our church community, of Jean-Pierre and Kim for pushing in, for trusting in God, for contending for healing. I believe this greatly pleases the heart of Father God. Are, are you seeing the good in the midst of the disappointments of life? Or are you missing God at times when you expect Him to reveal Himself one way, but in reality is now doing something different? Trust God, eyes of faith, to see all that He is doing right now in your life. When things don't go according to plan, then God has a better plan, a beautiful plan. Get onto His plan and take back your joy. So let's pray. God, I pray for eyes to see your goodness in every season of life and the grace to respond accordingly. Thank you for healing the hearts of your people. Thank you for being our comforter and our courage in every difficult season. The story isn't finished because you are in it. Amen. Thanks for joining me today. I am excited to see what God is going to do in the days ahead. Remember, you can have as much of God as you want. Seek Him and live. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.